All right, this is Steve from Massachusetts. Hi, guys. Long-time listener here. Been with you since day one. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I've replaced some crown molding in my highway, hallway maybe two years ago. The stock was from the orange box store and is finger-jointed and came pre-primed. I'm in Massachusetts, so pretty high humidity summers and dry, cold winters. When I installed it, probably in the spring, if I remember correctly, the scarf joint was reasonably tight, and I filled it with painter's caulk. Uh, he used Alex Plus. It's about a 40-foot run of crown, so there are two joints in it. Once the heating season got here, the lower indoor humidity caused the molding to shrink along its length, resulting in some ugly open joints, as shown in the photos. Mm -hmm. So he wants to know what happened here and how to prevent it. And I think that gap is bigger than you're letting on, uh, Steve, from Massachusetts when you installed it because wood doesn't sh 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 expand and contract along its length. Right, but I think because of the way he cut this scarf, I think, is the first part of his problem. The fact that that angle looks like it's a 45... Uh, <laughs> up and down, up not and down, back to not front. back to front. So the shrinkage is happening up and down, which you would expect, and that's what's causing it to open, I think. But there's other ways to... You know, sort of like buttress these if you wanted to. You could. What's biscuit. your fix? What's your fix? Biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. You I, like biscuits? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, that's my new tool that I is my like go to. I just got this thing like three weeks ago, and I've used it on pretty much every project since then. Is it because of the novelty, or because you really like it? I really like it. It just I, to me, it's almost easier than the Craig jig. So you would make a a butt joint and put a biscuit in it because no, I don't know if you could scarf. I would still do a twenty. Uh -huh. I would still probably do a 20 degree. And can scarf. you set a fence on your uh, biscuit cutter to accommodate that bevel? Yeah, w yeah. You just go off the back, and then you could use like a, a a zero biscuit and just set the depth to the max, and it'll it'll take care of that gap that you're going to end up with. Okay. Between the 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 joiner and the and the uh, the stock itself, and uh, there's actually a guy years ago. I got this article here. Clayton DeCorn. Oh my God! Yeah, you know I this? That so out he too. goes yeah. way back. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, get, like uh, he had the same idea I did, but he actually goes one step farther. He then also like puts like a I don't know a spline or a little splint on the on back, the back of that. side. Yeah, and the sort of glues and and uh, staples that as so, an additional backup. More conventionally, though, you would scarf this uh, with the opposing bevels front to back, not, not vertically. Not vertically. And then you yeah. have a lot of uh, glue surface, long grain glue, and I think mm -hmm. that would be a great way to keep it together too. Yeah, and Clayton, he said he uses a 2020, so a 20 bevel, 20 miter. So it sounds like he uses Does a little both. bit. Yeah. And, you know, he, one thing he points out is that he tries to build it on the ground and then cut and cope it you know, to fit afterwards, and so... So you're making this huge, long piece of stock, and then you're putting it up all at yeah, once? Which, yeah, which for a 40-foot run might be a little challenging, and I was thinking... if I'm wondering how big this freaking guy's house is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One room, 40 so, feet. <laughs> so, you know, if you're dealing with something in place like this, and uh, talking about that little splint on the back there, I mean, you know, the back of most crown molding, in, unless someone put blocking back there, is hollow, so you might be able to pop one leg of that off... Slip a piece of wood back there, pin you know, pin it with some good glue or good construction adhesive, and and then lay the other one back in place and pin that too to get it to be more stable. If that, but like you said, that gap, I, I'd love to see what it looks like in the summer because he says it it is opening up mm -hmm. and does seems, it close back up? Is what yeah. you're asking? Yeah. yeah. Alternatively, I would say bondo. I just fill it with bondo. Mm -hmm. But if it's <laughs> if it's moving. <laughs> Bondo's, you know, Bondo's like the least flexible thing there is. I mean, if you know it's not going to move, okay, so you do it with Bondo in the winter, so then it has nowhere to go, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> and you think it'll just, mushroom out? And then it just <laughs> in the summer. Yeah, there's enough flexibility yeah. in there. It'll just squish. I, I think I'm, I'm going to say cut a piece out, scarf it front to back, right? Put a backer on it, glue it back together. Mm -hmm. Get on with your life. Yeah. What do you think? But, yeah, d certainly... Cutting it the right angle and fastening it well are the, key, are the keys. I'm glad you keyed in on to the uh, scarf joint being angled, and, and uh, that is that it would affect uh, yeah, the opening. Yeah, opening for sure. <laughs>